your father, the brave Ortega, is dead. He set off to destroy the demon lord, Baramos, but fell in glorious battle. Unless stopped, Baramos will unleash a torrent of evil that will destroy the world. You must stop Baramos and discover the legend of Dragon Warrior. Your journey starts on Alihan. Only you decide where it ends. Or maybe the game does when you finish. Who knows? This is Dragon Quest III, developed by Heartbeat and published by Enix, released in 1996. It's, of course, part of that Dragon Quest Warrior series. This was a re-release of the original Dragon Warrior III, ported over to the Super Nintendo. There. Now you know. We're going to kind of be pulling from everything because the Super Nintendo game is really, really close to the NES game. So, there. Um... This was originally requested for me to play a long, long time ago by Ragnats, so there's a Let's Play of the Super Nintendo version and the NES version over at the website. Links will be below. Uh, the first three Dragon Quest games, 1, 2, and 3, are part of the same story. Dragon Warrior 3 is the first game chronologically, as well as the third game that features our hero Erdrick, or Loto, in the Japanese releases, and it follows our hero who's tasked with saving the world from Baramos, gathering a group of companions into a party. You travel the world, stop at towns, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, bad guy, kill him, you win. Got it. As well as the other games in the series, the scenario was designed by Yuji Hori, whereas the artwork is done by Akira Toriyama. Uh, Koichi Sugiyama composed all the music for Dragon Quest III. Chun Soft, President Koichi Nakamura, co-creator of Dragon Quest, stated he contrib contributed about 10% of the game's programming, which is nice of him to do. I mean, that's probably the best 10%. The game was released a year after the original, a longer period of development than its predecessor, and reflected the ever-lengthening game development process of the series. Uh, Hori, in an interview, said the developers had perfected the series' game structure in Dragon Quest III, and that was reflected by the transition from one character's quest to a party of heroes. We had a password system used in the first two Dragon Quest titles, which was dropped in order of save slot, which uh, was, you know, Hori didn't like codes. Uh, he had a policy removing any feature that had been used elsewhere, which turned out to be unworkable during Dragon Quest III's development, uh, when the game's world map concept was first uh, used by another game maker, uh, but Hori's team was too far into development to change it. Hori preferred a silent protagonist to make the player feel like they'd become the main character, but at one point Hori was forced to make the hero shout, Leave him to us! Run! Quick! Uh, was localized in 1991, the NES version, though not released until 92, and there were several changes. A new title sequence, um, new prologue, prologue with a volcano, uh, some new music cues, um, localization credits, extended mix of Aleph Guard's theme, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Super Nintendo version released in 96 during the last days of the Super NES in North America. It was never brought over due to Enix Corporation's closure in 1995. By the time Enix of America returned, the Super Nintendo had been discontinued. However, the next remake for the Game Boy Color was released in both. The Game Boy Color is versed on the, based on the Super Famicom version. Uh, Enix decided to give the packaging an anime feel due to fan demand on Enix message boards. Uh, had some new features, changes, new translation, adult elements that were originally cut, uh, becoming the first Game Boy Color RPG with a teen rating. It's the largest Game Boy Color game released in North America with a 32-bit ROM size. That's as big as a Super Mario RPG. A uh, new class of thief was added because that was super important, I guess. Uh, class names were changed for, like, Soldier to Warrior. Um... Jester class showed up. Mini games were added. Uh, I I don't know. Look, it's Dragon Warrior Three. It plays just like Dragon Warrior Three with all of the enhancements that you would expect that a Super Nintendo version would have. Um, it looks good. It plays good. It plays. I mean, there's not a thing wrong with it really. And of the first three games, one, two, and three, this is my probably favorite. It's a tie between one and this one, I think. Two, trash, don't play it. Of all of the games released for the Nintendo, the regular Nintendo, the Dragon Warrior games, which is one, two, three, and four, I like this one more than four, which a lot of people hate on me for, but that's okay. Uh, as for the Super Nintendo one, it's great. It's not a problem with it. Well worth a play. Um, but look, it's available on a billion things now. The NES... The Super Nintendo Game Boy Color cell phones, uh, the Wii, Android, and 
the PS4 and 3DS. So if you want to play it, you can find it. <laughs>